Yes or no? Yes or no? You know, thanks for what you do with your podcast and all the rest. Uh, you're doing a great job. Hope everybody keeps tuning in. You get a lot of good info, a lot of insights, understandings of how to get strong, how to stay strong, how to use your strength. You do a great job, dude. <laughs> you make things better than they are in real life, I think. Yeah. If you don't follow Massonomics, y'all do it. Social media, uh, website, everything. Massonomics! Yeah. Welcome to Massonomics, the world's strongest podcast. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Massonomics. Make sure you go visit Massonomics.com. There you'll find the rest of our powerful content. While you're there, check out our store and buy yourself some of that sweet Massonomics gear. All right. Welcome to this week's episode of the Massonomics Podcast. I am your host, Tyler. There is uh, nobody else with me right now. This is going to be a the last... Let me look at how many there are. Last of our interviews from the Arnold... Um, what do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, nine or ten. So, um, we're going to open up right away. We met with, uh, Bill Kazmaier again. If you remember our interview last year, um, anytime you talk with Bill, it's super interesting. And, uh, and, uh, but, but it was, uh, pretty cool hearing the way that he talks about things. Like when you listen to the way he talks about, uh, half Thor Bjornsson, he doesn't, most people just be like, he's awesome, he's big, and Bill goes into this, like, huge rants, and it's so fucking awesome the way that he describes everybody, you know, he's like, you know, there's one man's gonna walk down through the valley, and I'll, you'll just have to hear it, so, um, yeah, so up next here, we have Bill Kazmaier, and this was uh, also done at the SBD booth, so thanks to the people at SBD for helping us, uh, helping us out, letting us set up in their space, and probably kind of jam up their shit every time we were there, so Bill Kazmaier at the SBD booth. I think so. All right, guys, we're joined this year this year again by Bill Kazmaier, the legend. How are you doing today, Bill? Fantastic, thank you. You got a busy weekend ahead of you, I suppose? Yeah, a little bit, three hard days. <laughs> but I'm not lifting anything, so I'll be okay. That's good. <laughs> well, you look like you've been lifting some things. How's, how's the guys stay that jacked? You know, I'm going to be 65. But as a former world's strongest man, I've got to look like the world's strongest man. You might as well. you got to look at it if you can't still be it. I think you're probably still up there, though, aren't you? Uh, probably not, I think. Brian Shaw's probably got me by a little bit, maybe half Thor. <laughs> well, you're still the strongest guy in a lot of rooms, I'd be willing to bet. Yeah, thanks for that. But it's it's really important, you know, that the whole physical culture, you know, promotes strength, fitness, and it's great to be around the guys that are doing it. You know, the half Thors and, and the Shaws, Chris Dukowski and you know, Marius from uh, Poland. Yep. There's so many fabulous, fantastic athletes that this weekend's going to be really great, and they'll define... Who's the world's strongest man? Who? That's a great question. Now, who do you got your money on if you had to pick? We, you know, we got Shaw here, Thor, Jerry Pritchett, a few other greats. If you had to put your money one on today, would you be willing to throw a name out there? Yeah, well, you can't. <laughs> you know, Half Thor is fantastic. He's my favorite. He gives me a lot of respect and calls me Sir and Mr. Kazmaier. I love Jerry Pritchett. His deadlift is fantastic. But when you look at a guy who's four times the world's strongest man, you kind of have to go with him. And he's also a former champion. As a matter of fact, if you'll remember, he tore off his bicep at the Arnold, and he just kept going. That's a cosmonaut. That's really a tough guy. And I like that about him. So uh, it's going to be a great comp. Definitely. Uh, one other question along that lines. We've asked this question to some of our audience before, too. Greatest of all time strongman. We'd look at yourself, a few Icelanders, uh, Brian Shaw now. A few other names in there. Big any, Z. Big, big Z, of course. Any uh, any opinion there, greatest of all time? It's kind of tough, you know. When you, If you want to ask Brian Shaw to do 800 for 10 in the squat, 900 for a triple in squat, in training, uh, 500 for 15 in the bench, 600 for 5, 633 for 3, and 661, and that's without any specialization at all. And then you, you take it to the deadlift. I held the world record there too, and the total. And the thing is, that was back then. We really didn't know, you know, much about training and recovery and the rest. Uh, so, I kind of have a hard time with it. You know, although these guys are 100 pounds heavier, are we going to use a formula, or are we just going to say who's the biggest, strongest, and the best? When we look at some of these partial deadlifts, back in the day with the coins, no one knows that I had two torn hamstrings from the squat. I squatted 870 and tore one hamstring, and I wrapped it up, and I went 950 and tore the other one. 
So as we all know, in a deadlift, it's pretty tough to pull with torn hamstrings. And I did 1,055. So could I have done 1,075 or more? Probably. Uh, but that was then, and this is now. we got to give these guys their due. So uh, one of those three guys, Zadrunas, Half Thor, uh, Eddie Hall, statically strong, 200 kilo body weight. Brian Shaw, the same kind of weight, 6'8". Uh, these, are, these are the strongest guys that have ever walked the planet. Yeah, it's hard to argue with that, and we, we've got some maybe bias. We, we might back your corner in the argument, so maybe we'll just tell you you were the greatest of all time. Well, you know, that, that is really a nice honor and everything. And it, I guess what you have to do is wait 20 years from now and then look back in, through history because all I had to look at was John Cuck, about 2370, John Cole, a little over 2400, uh, and a lighter body weight, and Don Reinhout. 2420. I did 2425. It's sort of like after watching the movie Everest. Did you guys ever look at that movie? They climbed to the top and they put their flag. Well, I was at the top of the mountain. I would never have dreamt 35 years ago that a guy would walk through the valley and look me right in the eye. Half Thor Bjornsson at 6, 9, and 420. It's like things have changed. And uh, I didn't know that back then I could have taken my body weight to 400 pounds. I thought that 330 and more was enough. But I lived in Alabama where the temperature was 100 degrees. And uh, I didn't do everything right. There, there's definitely been advancements in the sport since from, from then to now, I would say, right? Yeah, for sure. You know, I mean, look at Eddie. He does it uh, just to help with cell metabolism. He lies in a hyperbaric chamber. I mean, there's very few people that will do that. You know, there's all sorts of stem cell work and uh, blood type uh, transfusions and centrifuge and, and all the rest PCP uh, so a variety of ways including chiropractic and so many nutritional aspects and training that you know some of these guys are getting some help from the best trainers in the world if anybody knows the name Stan Eifering how do I am I saying his last name right yeah, pretty close I yeah. well, the point is I know him I've listened to him in, in different seminars he's an extremely intelligent guy and a, a, a lifter who has not only walked the walk, but you know, he, as he talks the talk, he's helping a lot of guys. He's helped Brian. He's helped Half Thor. And when you when you get those guys ready and willing to take advice from guys like me and Eddie Cohen and a few of the greats from the past, then that's where you make your advances. And we continue to contribute to the culture and to helping these guys. And that's probably why they're advancing. They're getting help. Back in my day, there weren't very many guys that would help me. I had one coach, Tony Fitton, who showed up at my workouts, and he helped me. He loaded the weights, and uh, it helped a lot. But nowadays, you got companies supporting these athletes and helping them to live the lifestyle that they do, eating 10 or 20,000 calories in a day. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. Well, I think we're going to let you get. We got quite a line piling up, Bill. A lot of people want to see you. Thanks a lot for your time. It's always great to be able to sit and chat with one of the greatest that's ever walked the earth man i really appreciate it thank you so much thank yeah, you yeah and thank thank you and, and thanks uh to sbd here for bringing you here and uh getting you out talking to everyone uh it's, it's pretty cool to see you Great thanks a lot you. yeah thank you all right so next we met up with uh nick at uh, lit from live large um live large is an apparel company out of based out of ohio um, they're probably one of the best around as far as uh, really supporting the sport of powerlifting. Um, you know, Nick's, he's, he's the real deal. He's a good dude. And for us, it's always nice to talk to somebody who knows more about selling shirts than we do. Because <laughs> I think he sells a lot more goddamn t-shirts than we do. But uh, um, yeah, it was nice to talk, sit down and talk to Nick. We also got to talk with uh, Stacy Burr and uh, her girlfriend Jillian. And Stacy is an absolute exceptional follow on Instagram. Um, she's strong as shit, um, trains super, super intensely, and she's uh, definitely a lifter to keep an eye on for the next year. Um, she's going to do very, very big things. So this is Massonomics at the Live Large booth at the Arnold. That Are you, you rolling, Tommy? All right, we're here in the Live Large booth at the Arnold this year, joined by Nick from Live Large. How's it going today? It's going great. Another exciting day at the Arnold. Can't wait. Nick was just uh, basically making fun of our lift shirt, saying that 
that under no circumstances will he ever make a, a beautiful blue shirt. He likes, he, he, what, let's talk about your color schemes here. This is literally the most blue you will ever get. Oh, yeah. That's it. There will never be a blue shirt ever in the history of Live Large. If you want one, fuck off. Ain't happening. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Now, if you remember last year, we talked about we had our uh, the pizza eating contest last year in which we all got smashed by what looked like a 165-pound teenager. Uh, how did you come out in that? Uh, I literally just hung out and talked shit and ended up eating my entire pizza over the course of way longer than the time limit. But uh, that ringer just showed up and just crushed everyone. Like He's like an actual... He embarrassed all of us. Competitive eater guy who's like, oh, there's a real eating contest. Like, no, we're actually just dicking around. This is not real (laughs) in any way. Like, get Um, out of here. We were trying to have fun. And he showed up like hoping for a trophy, I think. But uh, that was wildly impressive. (laughs) I actually, I actually follow that dude on Instagram now. Yeah. And uh, holy shit, like he actually is a real, real, real fucking eater. It's insane. He, I think he was at Nathan's hot dog eating contest this year too. He qualified. Got smashed, but yeah. but I think that's okay. I mean, anyone who's qualified for Nathan's is way overqualified to eat against any of us. <laughs> Even Dan Bell. Yeah. 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 It's not going to out-total any of us, though, however. No, definitely not. So we also have a few of your athletes here. Hey. How's it going? Uh, how are we going to pile in here? Let's uh, yeah. go underneath. Right. So we're joined by Stacy Burr. Uh, Stacy, what's uh, let, let, let's run over what was your big meet last year? Let's run through your three three lifts from your last big meet. Uh, I did the U.S. Open last year, and I totaled 1333, uh, 501 squat, 303 bench, and a 529 deadlift. But you're so much smaller than I am. How <laughs> I, I, I live medium, but I'm you know try to stay pretty but strong. But you live large. Yeah, I live large. You know, I'm small here. ego's I'm big here. though. Yeah, ego's yeah. big, so yeah. makes up for it. How, how, how did you get stuck behind this booth here with Nick? Man, Nick, Nick was blessed with me after the U.S. Open. He, you know, he he saw me and he took a shot on me and sponsored me and. We've been going ever since, and so I've been trying to work with him and trying to get Live Large out there for us. So. Well, I think you're doing a good job. Are, are you competing in the U.S. Open again this year? Is that a big one coming up that's, for you? That's the one. Yeah. What are you, any numbers you're shooting for? All of them. All <laughs> of them. I'm, I'm the strongest out now. Um, you know, we're about 11 weeks out. I'm the strongest now that I've ever been, and we're just now starting. So if it's less than 1450, I don't want to talk about it. So <laughs> that, crazy. that's, where, that's yeah. where we're going for. That's awesome. You tend to keep most of your training numbers pretty quiet. Um, you're not posting a lot of your big lifts and training like a lot of people do, I guess. Is there a reason behind that? Oh, there's plenty of reason. How, how much time you got? How much time you got? Uh, well, you know, I'm a platform lifter. I When it co- counts, it's on the platform. And so in training, I train. I do just that. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, a lightweight day or if it's a speed day or if it's a max effort day. I'm going balls deep every single day, and I'm training to build that strength. And the only time I really have to show that, that's when it counts on the platform. So while everybody's, you know, exhibition or, you know, dick whipping a little bit, I'll stay back and I'll pay my dues. And then when it counts, that's when it—that's when it's money. So Showtime. Yeah, I mean. So I've trained with Stacy a few times now, and uh, it's kind of terrifying. Uh, she's one of the people, like, if you're training in the gym, you just want to stay, like, 20 feet away from her at all times like i'm just not going to breathe in the wrong direction i'm not going to touch anything uh just like the level of intensity like trained with a lot of people i've never seen anyone like nick's never even seen anything intense. i try, I try so to I, act polite I, around I've, nick i've mostly trained with her on vacation in hawaii yeah so that's so me on a relaxed like state. vacation training is still like here <laughs> when most super intense people are like here roughly so it's yeah it's everybody I mean, you know everybody talks about the intensity but it's just i mean it's the work that's got to be done it's just you, whatever the task is that's what you got to do and so i'm br- i'm bringing the intensity i'm bringing everything i got every time because it's gonna be wild it's gonna be wild so that's what you got to do to get better i like it yeah I like you're it. De- we definitely believe you <laughs> <laughs> no no bs just, just watch yeah. just watch and uh, so, Nick, how can people find you guys on social media? Uh, Live Large Fitness on Instagram, Live Large Fitness on Facebook. It's all stupid anyways. Uh, but What about the you, website? Uh, LiveLargeFitness.com. So and Stacy, how can people follow anywhere. you? You can follow me from Nick at Live Large, of course, because he posts me all the time. But, and you can follow me at, my name is Bama Burr, and that's me. Um, and that's it, really. And uh, now, now Jillian is here. The question is, what are you hiding that she's eating? 
Smoking, eating, you know, it goes hand in. How much food back here, Jillian? How, how much food back here? You can come on in the middle here. How much food back here is earmarked for you? All of it. There's a whole pallet of bag stock in yeah. the back that we had to move some stuff out. We had to put her some food back there. Yeah. My backpack is stacked with yeah, snacks. I mean, they, so. go, they go peek right there yeah. between her and Katie. So. I, I think when I checked Instagram this morning, there was multiple donuts having been eaten literally during that one feed. So what are we talking over the course of how many, was it 24 hours when those stories expire? Yeah. How so. many donuts yeah. have you eaten in the last 24 hours? Four. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> they're pretty big too. They're probably like this big. I like it. Well, see, when we come here, we don't get to eat. We just end up running around all the time, and so we come back small and have to start over. You guys About are doing it right. Pounds down. <laughs> so. I got strong. Got so strong. So. Well, thanks a lot, everybody. Um, I think that'll wrap us up for yeah, today. Yeah, we really appreciate yeah, it. Thanks a lot for your time. Up next, we sat down with Stan Efferding at while well, he was at the Arnold selling his Cooler 2.0. Um, Stan, we really wanted to talk to you again this year, just to get him to uh, you know speak to you guys about what he's been doing working with Half Thor and uh, Brian Shaw. This was, I believe, I'm trying to remember when this was. I think this was part way through the Strongman competition, maybe after the first day. Um, so. He uh, weighed in on kind of what he's been doing nutritionally with those guys, and we actually finally got somebody to admit how much they actually weigh, which is actually really hard because most of the time people just speculate. Um, nobody ever really knows. The athletes kind of don't say. They kind of try to keep that a secret. Um, so it was kind of nice. We actually got to put Stan on the spot and make him put a number <laughs> on it. So um, this is Stan Efforting, and he is easily one of the best follows out there. Um, his YouTube channel, he puts out all sorts of good free information. So um, for us, it's a huge honor to get to interview Stan. I think he's probably one of my top five favorite people in the fitness world. So it's a big honor for us to interview him. So here's Stan at the cooler booth at the Arnold. That's right. <laughs> all right, we are here at the Stan, with Stan Efferding at the Arnold at the cooler booth. Stan, how's it going this year? Good, man. It's great. Been busy. I bet. I bet. So, first question we asked when we got here is, why don't Tanner and I's arms look like your arms? <laughs> I'm older than you guys. Oh, it just takes a little more time. Yeah, it's yeah. just time. Time yeah. under tension. Good. That, that makes sense now. I, I can understand that. Yeah. We, uh, uh, last year we visited with Mike O'Hearn, yeah. and he uh, had some choice. Wor uh, have you ever heard of him? Never heard of him. Does a ring a bell? Yeah. Uh, he had a lot to say about you, and most of it wa wasn't the most pleasant. Do you have anything we could tell him this year? Uh, just that I'm better looking than him. My hair is nicer. That's about it. Okay. Well, your, well, hair's, your hair is real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, now we, we've actually, you know, we're, we're big fans. We've been following you for quite a long time, and um, we really noticed a lot of the stuff you've been helping with some of these strong men with their nutrition and all this stuff lately. Um, you want to tell us about what, how you had some of these guys coming into it this year? You know, what we tried to do was improve the amount of food they could eat and cause as little digestive problems as possible. So we, everybody talks about the steak and rice diet, the vertical diet that, that I've been uh, putting these guys on, really focus first and foremost on how much can they assimilate, not just how much they can eat, but how much they can use. Yeah. Getting them healthy with the blood tests and their uh, blood sugars is really important, you know, so their insulin sensitivity is good. And then just start driving massive quantities of, of the kinds of foods that they can utilize real well. And that's kind of an experimentation process. I give them a diet, I ask them how they feel about the meals after each one, and then we do the 10 minute walks and we just start to try and get them to be able to utilize more food more often, and then just keep feeding them. I like it. Yeah. Now, I've, I've heard a lot of people say yeah. this year, first off, it looks to me like Brian Shaw and Half Thor yeah. are bigger than they've ever been. Yeah. At least, I mean, they look bigger, fuller, and actually even more jacked than probably ever. They're not just yeah. fatter or simply larger. Yeah. Um, how, first off, do you know like what they weighed going in? Because it seems like I only hear speculation. Yeah, again, there's a lot of 400 yeah. this, 400 that, but like an yeah. exact number, it seems like they don't they don't put it out there very often. Yeah, well, Brian was north of 440, and Hopthor was just under 430. Okay. So, and again, like you said, their waist came down, their upper bodies grew bigger. I mean, we saw recently that uh, Brian Shaw posted a selfie with his shirt off. When have you ever seen that before? No, first time. So he's excited about the results that he got, and it was because we, we drove healthier foods. 
try to eliminate a lot of stuff that brings a lot of baggage with it, you know, a lot of uh, uh, digestive issues. So he just, he didn't eat any wheat. He stayed away from uh, high allergen foods. And we, we drove most of the quantity with basically steak and rice. And then got a good foundation of healthy foods so that all of his micronutrients were taken care of as well. And we focused on stimulating the liver, stimulating the thyroid. So now he's just a machine. He feels better, they're healthy. They felt great yesterday after the first two events. They're both extremely healthy today and strong. I think it's gonna be a great war. So, so Half Thor, you know, he's in that 420 to 440 range now. He's a relatively young man. Over time, could you see an optimal weight for him being above 450, or is he in that range now? What do you think? I think he's pretty optimum. I, I don't like to just do weight for the sake of weight. I want to make sure that when he came to me, he was 420, but he was getting fatter, and he, was, he was, wasn't getting any stronger. So we tried to, to flip the script on that and make sure that he was adding muscle and not fat. And that's, that's what we were able to change over the course of the last year. Brian responded extremely quickly because we've only been working together for a few months. And his body composition changed immediately. And the biggest thing, and you know, I'll rat him out on this, but the number one thing he said when uh, I talked to him about the diet was, he goes, oh my God, I'm regular. Because <laughs> you know, when you eat that much food, particularly that type of food, you know, I hop for breakfast and burritos for lunch and pizza for dinner, that you're on the toilet all the time. And we can relate to that. Yeah, we can relate to that. We know we've all been there. <laughs> and, and that's why I know this works, because I've been there. I've done it. I've done it. I've tried it both ways, many ways over all the years. So now we've got the kind of nutrients that he's using where he's regular and he's healthy and he feels good and his stomach's good. And he can eat more often, more food more often without all of the lethargy and the exhaustion. He's, he's, his energy levels are extraordinary. Uh, either of those two that you'd like to see win. I suppose you couldn't say one or the other today. No, you know, I don't have a dog in the fight. I'm just happy that they're both healthy and that they're both, in, uh, you know, got the results that they wanted from the program. And I'll be honest with you, I've been working with Thor for over a year. And when Brian Shaw came to me, I said, Thor, what do you think about that? And Thor says, go for it. He goes, I want the best Brian, you know, that uh, when I compete against him at the Arnold and the world's strongest man, he goes, I want us to be, you know, the best of our game. So that was awesome of him to do. Yeah, that is awesome. <laughs> Well, Stan, um, I want to recommend to all anyone watching this, make sure that they, what is your YouTube channel? Is it just Stan Efforting? Everything's Stan Efforting, yeah. The Instagram is Stan Efforting. The YouTube Stan Efforting. My website, StanEfforting.com. It's quality branding there. <laughs> so make sure you follow Stan Efforting. Specifically now, the YouTube, my favorite thing, Stan puts out exceptional free information all the time. It's from the Rhino's Rants to now the 10-Minute Talks. And... I, I highly recommend checking it out. It's good, really quality information, super entertaining. Stan, you're a real asset. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot, man. We, we really appreciate and, it. And make sure you go to, go to, let's talk about the cooler real quick. Yeah, thecooler.com or stanefforting.com. Get you to the same place. Got the new cooler 2.0, and it's uh, it's been flying off the shelves. We're excited. Awesome. No, the cooler da Damon's not here this weekend, is he? No, I missed him. <laughs> He's traveling, doing his book tour. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Well, thanks a lot, Stan. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Right. I think we already awesome. shook hands, didn't we? No worries. Can we get a picture thanks, with you? All right, so this next one we have uh, Tom Finn. Uh, this is at the JB Boss booth. I'm gonna I'm gonna give a little context to this because this is about the most chaotic fucking two minutes of audio you're gonna hear. Um, this is there's a moment every year I think at the Arnold where somewhere between like one and three p.m. on that Saturday where the crowd is way too fucking packed and everybody's trying to move one direction or another. And they're just trying to basically get away from where they are. And you can't get anywhere. It's fucking the most miserable place in the world. And this was when we <laughs> had scheduled to meet um, Tom Finn and uh, Jacked and Homeless and Tom Callis at the JB Boss booth. Um, they were going to come there and there was going to be a whole bunch of fans piled up there. And everyone's going to be chugging beer. And it was pretty cool except it was at during that exact moment in the Arnold in which you can't fucking get anywhere so <clears throat> we had this huge scene right in front of boss's booth where people are pulling out fucking beer bongs and funnels out of their backpacks and we've got uh you know cameras set up and we're trying to move around through the crowd and trying to get shots and so this whole thing is fucking loud. Everybody's yelling. Um, it's uh, I don't even know how the video is going to turn out with this because it was such tight quarters. We're talking like shoulder to shoulder, nuts to butts, humanity for fucking, you know, basically of half a mile inside this building. 
And um, so we got in. We it pretty much came in, chugged a beer. We we let let the Toms and uh, basically do a damn wrestling promo. And then we uh, and then we bugged right on out of there because I think we were gonna pull our hair out if we had to stay. The crowd was so fucking thick, you guys. So uh, here is a few minutes of a lot of us yelling and drinking beer with uh, Tom Finn at the Arnold. This is also at the JB Boss booth. So uh, thanks to them guys for at least giving us a little bit of shelter out of the crowd. We could we jumped behind into the booth and um, crowded that place up too. So uh, thanks to Boss and them. But here's uh, here's Tom Finn and them at the JB Boss booth. So we are here at JB Boss booth at the Arnold Classic 2018. Tom Finn is here, raising all sorts of hell. He's throwing beers around. We're shotgunning beer, joined by Jacked and Homeless. Tom Callis is hiding out. I don't know where he is. Tom's hanging out back here. We're preparing to do a 21 beer salute for all the fallen drunks out there. So I dedicate this to every drunk that's dead. A 21 beer salute. Well, last night we, uh, what did we get? Tom got in a fight with Ronda Rousey. I got my hair ripped off the back of my head by Randy Couture, and we drank about 40 fucking beers with Brandon Popeye, what's his last name? Purdue. And uh, we woke up, I had one Pedialyte, one taco, and three beers. And I'm ready to fucking do it all over again, baby. Let's get fucking stupid. You got anything to say? Homeless man, this is the world's strongest homeless man. I'm just happy to be here, and I want everybody to give a big shout for J.B. Boss right now, huh? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, boss? We also have NWO Hulk Hogan here, Tom Callis. Yeah, we got Hulk Hogan checking in here. Uh, we're ready to party. We're very hungover. Uh, had some Pedialytes this morning for breakfast, a bacon burrito, and now we're chugging Miller Lights. We'll be intoxicated at the Hilton Hotel, probably drinking with uh, Ronda Rousey again. Arnold's on his way. Come on down. Five, two, three. Chaos, right? <laughs> so next we met with uh, with Gino, the basically the the pirate of powerlifting announcing for the USAPL. Um, Gino is probably one of my favorite people to interview simply because he's so good on the mic. Um, He's a guy that can show up at 8 o'clock in the morning for a powerlifting meet and get people fucking super jazzed up to squat, which <laughs> um, is, is impressive on its own. I mean, he's probably the world's best spreadsheet reader and somehow finds a way to make it super interesting. So um, Gino's really charismatic, really good on the mic, and he's been you know in the powerlifting world for an awfully long time. So um, this is a, this is a, a nice little conversation we have with Gino. We actually got to do this. You, when you see the video, which will be up on our YouTube channel, um, at massonomics or youtube.com forward slash massonomics, we actually got to film this, uh, right up on the USAPL stage, um, at, at the Arnold. So, um, that was pretty cool. So here is Gino. Okay, go ahead. We can't. I do not like being around these big boys. I'm usually the big, well, the tallest, not yeah. the biggest. And I'm around a couple of giants here. They're like two tree trunks. I'm at the Sequoia Mountains. All right, let's go. That's what we've actually been finding, Gino, is that we go to interview a lot of lifters, power lifters. These guys, they're huge and they're strong. They're just not that tall. Yeah, that's right, because most of, you know, well, power lifters, what's the perfect body? Yeah, the exact opposite of what yeah. I am, okay? <laughs> You know, the shorter and the squatty. You know, I remember Arnold years ago when he was doing an interview, the little short guys, you know, they would, they would, they would pose down like this, and Arnold would say, I don't care that you're short. Stretch it out. You know, <laughs> give us the right pose. So it's nice to be around two giants, man, <laughs> two gigantors here in the house. Heck you yeah. get that, Jonah, and pretty soon they're coming for you. <laughs> so earlier we were, we were joking about what time it is, what day it is. Yep. What's this weekend like for you here at the Arnold? You know, I don't know if I'm coming or going sometimes. Uh, I get the, the schedule last second, and they just, thank goodness there's plenty of people walking around with clipboards that tell me what to do because I just kind of show up, and then they kind of drag me along and tell me where to go, when to be there. And they're running the marathon out there today, and, man, was I nervous because uh, 
I didn't see Arnold running, but uh, I was nervous because I didn't think we were going to get here on time. But I'm looking forward to the Titan Bench Bash today. This is going to be good. And Jonah, the Titan Bench Bash, wish you were here, pal. We miss you. Not the same without him. No, it's not. And, and you know what? That's okay. He's taken, I think he took some time off for, what, like two weeks, and then he came back again? You know, he, I heard he lost some weight. And uh, I heard he's in good physical shape, and he's actually getting stronger. Who would have thought a super heavyweight loses weight and comes back with more strength? So I'm looking forward to seeing him back on the bench. I announced to Jonah in, uh, see, I'm all over the world and I forget, uh, Denmark. Denmark two years ago when he won the world championship. And he stared down, uh, he stared down my man from, 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 uh, from Finland. I forget his name right now. And uh, with those steely blue eyes that he has, you know. And, uh, and last year, what did he do? He tied, right? And there was a tie, but the body weight, he got the silver, man. Jonah, you're number one in my book. You always will be, pal. For sure. Now, let's not let, <laughs> now, let's not let that go to Jonah's head. Uh, now, you're, you're coming our way here. When is this? Really uh, soon here, a couple weeks? Uh, yeah. yeah, the exact day is March 17th. St. Patrick's Day. And St. Patty's Day. And from what I understand, uh, in between sets, we're going to have a couple of kegs of green beer. Now, I know in Chicago they dye the river green. In, 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 in South Dakota, we dye the beer green, okay? So it's going to be a St. Patty's Day powerlifting party. And, man, I hope you all come because I am looking forward to crank it up on St. Patty's Day. That's awesome. Gonna fun. That's going to be fun. <laughs> Definitely. Now, is Massonomics going to have a lot of lifters there or what? Yes. We've I got think, quite a few. How, I, I, how many I you got? We'll, you I know? think we'll have seven or eight. Seven there. or eight? Yeah. I so. hope I get to shout out a couple more state records for them. Yes. And, and possibly some national records because the Massonomics boys, they rock all intensity, man. All intensity. <laughs> the Massonomics boys are in the house. <laughs> That's our favorite line. We, 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 favorite. Cut, we cut that from you, you saying that last year, and we still use it all the time. Feel the traps on these boys, man. Oh, my God. It's like two tree trunks. Well, one other question. Uh, this weekend, what uh, could you pick out one moment, one lifter, or anything that really stuck out to you that you enjoyed seeing? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to say it was as recently as yesterday with the raw bench when Jen Thompson – uh, beat her own world record mm -hmm. and threw up uh, 314 pounds, I believe, at 134 pound body weight. It's crazy. That girl is just insane. She is a genetic freak. Uh, I'm doing one of her meets too, not to plug somebody else other oh, than South no, that's Dakota. Good. We, anything you got. We got the Battle of the Border coming up, which is a Jen Thompson meet uh, coming up. Uh, uh, later in uh, April uh, next month, right after Jonah's meet. And by the way, out of the clutches of the largest blue <laughs> whale in the ocean, right from the Old Testament, Jonah Leo will rise again. No whale can hold him down, and he will be on the bench once again. Jonah Leo does not sleep with the fishes. He kicks ass and takes them out. Jonah will see you on the bench soon. That is the perfect way to finish, yep, I that's think. That's it. Thanks a lot, Gino. I appreciate it. Thank we, you both for having me. Thank you. Hey, thanks, thanks a lot, Jay. Thank you. You guys we'll are the best. Yeah, we're, we're, we're looking forward to seeing you in, no. in March here. So. What is your history, Ben? All right. Next, we caught up with, uh, this was after the, I think, the bench competition. Um, we met up with Jen Thompson. Um, we got to step outside away from the noise, so I think this sounds a little bit, a little better here than it was in some of the uh, earlier clips in this episode. But we got to, uh, yeah, I got to talk with Jen Thompson, and she, I mean, she is basically one of the best bench pressers, pound for pound, that is on the face of the earth. And um, yeah, she, she does it, <laughs> she does it better than anybody else. So um, yeah, she's a she's a legend. It's an honor to interview her, and uh, so here's here is Jen Thompson. All right, we're here uh, with Jen Thompson, world record record holder and uh, best pound for pound bench presser, men or woman in the world. Would you agree with that? Yeah. <laughs> the numbers don't lie, do they? No, they don't. You really can't argue with them. They're just there. Yeah. How? How? Tell us about how the meet went yesterday. It was awesome. Um, it was the Grand Prix sponsored by SBD, and there was um, four of us. That so was kind of everybody's game. So the competition was fierce. And it was awesome, and I had my day, and I um, I pulled out a pretty handedly win. 
What what did you, throw, you throw, some, throw some numbers our way yeah. here. I uh, squatted 342, I benched 313, and I deadlifted 446. Jesus. <laughs> we, we've got a word, like we were talking about it earlier, uh, maybe you call it like sneaky strong. I wondered if you're ever around people that maybe don't understand lifting quite as well or don't know you from your lifting, if you explain some of those things to them, are they shocked or do you ever get people that just don't believe you? Yeah, everyone always says, I think you would be bigger when they meet me. They're like, you're not as big as I thought you'd be, which I figure is a compliment. <laughs> Definitely. So what what is your secret then? <laughs> um, well, I think a lot of competing wise, I always open super light and I make giant jumps in my lifts. So a lot of people have a hard time doing that, but I have sort of an unusual strategy that works for me. So I think that works. And then I think um, workout wise, um, we do the three big lifts, but I do like just a ton of accessory work. And I think that's what's made me really strong is all the accessory stuff I do. Yeah, I think you're pretty well known for your uh, heavy holds, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what's the heaviest holding that you've done before? Um, for the bench, it was 520. And your body weight, just to remind everyone, is? Uh, 135. <laughs> so my bench press strategy, which is to just get bigger, Apparently I'm fucking up. <laughs> that helps too. Uh, <laughs> weight I, I, pushes weight, we say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you make a lot of men around the gyms in the world feel bad about themselves. <laughs> I hear about it sometimes on, on IG. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and uh, you, earlier this was off camera. You happened to mention that our lift shirt, you happen to sleep in that sometimes. I want to make sure we get that on camera too. Oh yeah, it's my favorite night shirt. It's the most comfortable shirt I own. And I brought. I always bring it on special occasions. So it's here. It's probably why I slept so good the night before my competition, for sure. Yeah. Uh, is it fun for you coming to the Arnold like this and like getting stopped by people? I imagine that doesn't happen when you're walking around your hometown all the time, but here you're kind of you know, a little bit of a celebrity. Is that a cool feeling or is that weird? It's super cool. Actually, my sister came down from Detroit yesterday and it's the first time she's seen me compete in years. And she took pictures of everyone taking pictures of me. So she's got like 20 different pictures of me getting my picture taken. Yeah. But I love it. Like people are always like, oh, I'm sorry to bother you. It's no bother. I think it's so cool that people want their picture with me. So it's neat. Uh, yeah, definitely. Tyler, anything? I think that's got us about wrapped up. Yep. Thanks a whole bunch for your time. Uh, great work yesterday, and we look forward to seeing you lift in the future. I feel like I'm between like the Twin Towers or something. <laughs> this is we, that's awesome. not the first time we've got. <laughs> we've actually weekend. everyone we've interviewed has been surprisingly yeah. short. What, what 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 we lack in strength, we make up for trying to make up for in just height. You go grab <laughs> Blaine Sumner over there and make yeah. you feel a little better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we stood next to him last year and interviewed him in this very same corner. And he's as, he makes big, us feel he's as big as that pop machine over there for sure. <laughs> yeah, you definitely have to stand more this way. Yes, <laughs> yes, definitely. Well, thank you. We really appreciate it. It's awesome to meet you. Real nice meeting you. Yeah, thank, thank, you. So thank you. Thank you. Now, that is an interview where you are definitely going to want to check out on YouTube. Um, that's youtube.com forward slash Um Just to see, compared to Tanner and I, Jen is definitely a very normal sized person and uh the numbers that she can bench press are absolutely incredible um yeah that's pretty pretty nuts so um up next we made our way to uh over to the sbd booth again and we stopped by and talked to ray williams who uh we were super stoked to get him uh obviously uh, this was like right after he had done his uh had his big squat day and we'll let him get into the numbers but um we had some questions we wanted to actually ask him this year we were prepared enough and uh and actually uh, actually got to him so uh, my biggest concern is always when i watch him lift is how much fucking time he spends with the bar on his back i think he he, he puts it on his back he walks it out he you know uh <laughs> sings a couple songs um, but yeah, so Ray kind of got into what goes through his head and why, why that's in his setup. Um, we got to talking about his, his unreasonably small knee sleeves and how he's able to fit them over his giant legs. Um, but yeah, apparently of all the things Ray can do, having big calves is not, uh, is not one of them, but, uh, here's Ray Williams at the SBD booth. We're joined here at the SBD booth, big Ray Williams, Ray coming off a big day yesterday. How'd squatting go? Um, it didn't go as planned. Um, 
I won in 1080, but fatigue from the past three weeks of traveling really kind of threw me off, so 1069 was the number. Yeah, I'd probably be okay with that. I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah, World record man, day was, is bad. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a blessing. It was a true blessing. So you wanted to just totally smash the, your own world record as opposed to just beat it a little bit? I mean, <laughs> when you train from October to, what is this, March for one meet, yeah. Like, it was, I wanted total domination, but you can only do what the body will allow you to do. For sure. Now, speaking of what your body will allow you to do, I remember watching a video recently of you wearing your extra large SPD knee sleeves, putting them on. I wear 2XL knee sleeves, and I fight like a little girl to get mine up. Uh, am I just a wuss, or is there a secret I'm missing How out on? How are you getting those on? <laughs> well, I have a hereditary disadvantage that most men don't have to worry about. I have small calves. So, <laughs> plus, I roll my knee sleeves different than everybody else does. Most people just fold them one time. I fold mine at the bottom and at the top so that I can get under the knee apron and they just they slide up easier. You just grab a hold of it and yank it up. Yank them up. So, what, what I just took away from that is you do not need large calves to have a big squat. No, no. <laughs> now, question is, would you trade bigger calves for your big squat? No, not at all. <laughs> That's the right answer. I'd probably <laughs> trade my thick calves for your squat too. <laughs> so. Uh, what I'm wondering, I, I don't think it's a question of if so much as when, but 500 kilograms, what do you think about that? Um, I got to do some posterior chain work, and hopefully I can put it up by Worlds. Um, that's the goal by Worlds. I want to make it a world record because, you know, health is a huge part of what we do. So I'm trying to do it while I'm healthy, while, I'm, while I got it. So... That's the goal by Worlds, you know, and, and we'll see from there. We've also noticed a few things with uh, with your squat. You seem to spend so much more time than a lot of other athletes with the bar on your back. At you walk top. it out, you stay there. I feel like you sing a little song to yourself. <laughs> I mean, we're talking like many, many, many seconds in which I would be, anytime I step back with a heavy squat, I feel like, in a video game, my power bar goes boop. <laughs> and how do you stand out there for that long? Why do you stand out there for that long? And what's going through your head? It's a mentality. Um, pretty much when you squat that big, you know what I'm saying, you have to have a fearless mentality. Because nine times out of 10, I'm in the gym by myself. Um, if something does happen, I don't have anybody. So I think I've conditioned myself to where I'm not gonna squat it until I'm ready. Like I think the longest I stood with the bar on my back was like a minute. So, you know, my body, I'm conditioned to do it. So it's second nature almost. Kind of like when I compete, I stand there and I'm not going to squat it until I'm ready. I like it. Right. This week I saw you post a video. Uh, you did a, a double deadlift. It was about, it was over 800, about yes, 820 pounds or so. Yes, but we happened to notice you were wearing a shirt that had this same lettering on it, that our shirt. That was about the sexiest deadlift video we've ever seen. Any thoughts? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> you know when you throw on when you throw on the lift, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you got to go hard to go home. You know what I'm saying. So I went hard. Yeah. Amen. Uh, how, one other question I had. Uh, there's been some other meets coming up, non USAPL, like the U.S. Open. Uh, there's some the tribute meet that's coming out soon, and they're starting to throw more money out there at some of that stuff. Is there any? amount of money or or anything that would get you to want to do that i mean is that something that you'd ever do i'm just curious i don't i don't think there's a right or a wrong answer but just curious your thoughts i mean money makes everybody think twice yeah. i mean that's why you know you have so many people that want to do it i mean 40 grand is more money than some people make in a year yeah. so i mean it, it's a lot and it, it gives people a lot to think on but as far as me right now i'm more concerned about I want to be an IPF Hall of Famer. That's the goal. I mean, I came into this as a nobody. Um, I built somewhat of a reputation, and I want to ride that hopefully one day into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's a pretty awesome point of view to take on it too, I think. Yeah. I guess I have one last question, Ray. Uh, what, what, what time is it? It's always money time. <laughs> always, always money time. It's always money time. You heard it here first. Thanks a lot, Ray. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Awesome, man. Thanks. Yes, sir. Get a mask. <laughs> Can we get a
So when I asked Ray what time it was, I was really worried that he wasn't going to get the joke. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad he bit down on that one. Um, next, we're still at the SPD booth for this next one. This is uh, Terry Holland's uh, strongman competitor. I didn't realize actually in, until Tanner brought it up in this interview actually how many times Terry Holland's has competed at Worlds. Um, really, really fucking impressive. Uh, most of the topic of conversation now, which is probably any, for anybody that sees him now, is how he's so lean and so jacked now. Because I think he's dropped, he says in this interview, but you know, around 100 pounds. And so, um, yeah, he's got he's on the uh, the jacked and tan train. But he gets in this and goes through like kind of how he dropped the weight, still how much food he's eaten, and uh, what that uh, transition has been like. So, um, here's Terry Hollins at the SPD booth. Ready? Okay, we're here with the big Terry Hollins, but what I'm wondering is what happened to the rest of you? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've just been on a bit of a weight cut the last sort of year and a half, two years. I've come down from about 450 to 330 now, so, um, yeah, I mean, it's more just I'm getting a bit older and I need to start looking after myself a little bit better, and um, power's not quite there where it used to be, but I'm hoping I can sort of make up for it on some of the moving events. I mean, the, the, the strength's coming back. But initially, I took like a, a 60 kilo drop on my deadlift and things like that. But it is working its way back up, and hopefully, I can get somewhere near to where I used to be. Do, that's what I'm wondering: is do you think at a, a physique like this, do you think you can eventually get to the point over time where you're at that same strength level? Um, I'm not too sure. I mean, hopefully, I can obviously, and I'll keep working hard to do that. But it's, um, you know, I mean, for for me now at the point I'm at in my career, I'm enjoying doing strongman still. I want to prolong my career as long as possible. Realistically, my chance of winning world strongest man have probably passed, and I accept that now. So, for for now, it's about being as competitive as I can for as long as I can because I want to keep doing it. You know, because I still love doing it. Yeah, definitely. How long did it take you to drop the weight off? So I've dropped around about yeah 120 pounds in just over two years. So. I mean, most of that's come sort of in the last year and a half. Um, I was gradually sort of coming down from 205 kilos, so I was like 450, and I came down to about, well, just a touch under 400 pounds. And then from in the last sort of year and a bit is where I've made the drop down to like 330. So, Any like real specific changes or did you just have to stop force feeding to maintain that big weight? Yeah, I mean, it was a little bit of um, just clean up my diet a little bit, but the big one for me, which you know, it's not something I'm proud of. I used to like a good few beers on the weekend, and um, so I basically stopped drinking. <laughs> we know drinking. how that goes. Yeah, exactly, so I stopped drinking completely. I haven't drunk for a year now, any alcohol at all, and um, yeah, just clean my diet up a little bit, try to increase the intensity in my training sessions a little bit. Now, when you were at 450, it seems like a lot of those guys at that weight, you guys really are eating to an uncomfortable level all of the time anyways. Is it kind of easy when you are consuming that much food to just like, not eat until it hurts and then the weight just kind of comes off yeah i mean i i, I mean yeah i mean i'm still hitting like eight thousand calories a day so it's not like i'm I, you know i'm really <laughs> under eating I'm, I'm i'm cutting weight on eight thousand calories a day so it's not too bad but um yeah i mean before i was probably twelve thousand, thirteen thousand, and eating a lot of shit food as well to be honest just because you know i'm not like guys like brian shaw who've got these ridiculous appetites and for me to hit twelve thousand calories a day i have to eat some some crappy food in there as well because you know I, i'm just not going to do that eating clean all the time so it's um you know i mean it was just a case of just cleaning it up a little bit i still eat way more food than i need so well i feel like i do but um yeah i mean it's, it's just a case of just getting the shit out of the diet and eating a little bit more healthily and stopping drinking all the time so if we were to tell people the terry holland's diet if you want to lose weight just eight thousand calories a day <laughs> start there see what happens yeah. Uh, dial it in from there <laughs> question i've got for you terry so you got the killer physique now you've got this awesome british accent i feel like the ladies have to be digging this what do you think oh, i don't know um actually my the reason i'm here mainly is because my girlfriend was competing in the fitness category she comes second in the pro fitness which you know i'm over the moon for her but um she's worked really hard and um you know i mean yeah if you've got a hot a hot girlfriend like that you've got to at least look up half decent <laughs> That's a good philosophy. <laughs> yeah, how about World's Strongest Man this year? Are you competing? Yeah, um, I've, I actually got my invite what, since I've been here. They were trying to send it to me a few weeks ago, but for some reason they didn't know, or they had the wrong email for me. But um, yeah, no, I'm qualified end of April off to the Philippines. I've got Arnold's Australia, 
Europe's strongest man and FIBO in between then. So I've got a really busy couple of months coming up. Does that become a lot of competing? I mean, how bad does that beat a guy up, that, that kind of doing the whole tour thing? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty tough. And I mean, it's really closed in now. The season used to be a lot longer. Everything seems to happen at once now. You used to have the Arnold's in March and then Worlds was sort of September time. But for some reason now, it's all really crammed together. The only positive is once I get past May, I'm pretty much done for the year. So I can relax a little bit. But um, I mean, yeah, it's going to be a tough couple of months. But, you know, I'll pick and choose a little bit. Europe's is a big one for me and Worlds, obviously. The FIBO and Arnold's Australia are more for fun, use them as training sessions. So I'll train in the week as I normally would and use it as like an event training session. And um, hopefully, you know, I can pick up a few little decent placings in those two, but obviously the main focus is always going to be World's Strongest Man. Yeah, uh, I don't know how much you got to watch the Arnold Strongman or not here, but curious if you had any takeaways between uh, watching Thor, Thor dominated awesome performance or anything about Brian or Mateus. There's some good performances out there. Anyth anything you noticed? Yeah, I mean, I watched uh, most of it. If I wasn't watching it down here, I was watching it back in my hotel room on the live stream. But, um, I mean, Thor's looked in great shape for a couple of months now. I mean, he's been getting stronger and stronger. I'm not surprised he won. You know, I mean, obviously, I think the Brian and, and Thor, are, you know, they're, they're head and shoulders above the rest of the guys as, as a strong man as a whole. But, you know, there were some good performances, I thought. Like, Rauno Heinler did well on the axle yesterday. He was starting to struggle a little bit with injuries. Mateus did amazing on the stone. And um, yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed it. Jerry on the on the frame carry as well was really impressive. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I mean they did amazing. And I've, I've done the Arnold's a couple of times, and it's I think people sort of don't always understand how hard it is. I mean, on your body, by the time you get to that last event, and it's like a 400 pound axle. I mean, that's a big weight. If it was the first event, you know, let alone the last event, and for the guys to to go out there and even get one rep is is amazing. Uh, one other thing, just to put in perspective to our listeners, you know, how good you've been at this for how long. Have you done more World's Strongest Man finals or World's Strongest Man competitions than anyone? Or, or how many have you done? So I've competed at World's Strongest Man now 13 times, and I made the final nine years in a row, which which is the record for the most consecutive finals. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's been pretty good. But, you know, obviously the aim is to get back to the final this year because I've missed it the last two years, and I was retired for a year as well. So, um yeah, the plan is to get back to the final this year and see what happens. Awesome. Awesome. Terry Hollins, lean, not very mean. Nice guy. <laughs> yeah, thanks for, thanks thanks for taking the time. Thank I'm you glad much. you're here with SPD. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So if you've been paying attention to these interviews, you're probably noticing a trend, and that is that Tanner and I have no idea how to start or finish these interviews. So <laughs> we end up uh, kind of awkwardly trailing off or shaking hands with them three or four times and um, yeah, we're not actually good at that. <laughs> we have no idea what we're doing. Uh, anyway, I'm going to tell you a little backstory behind this next one. So <clears throat> at this point in the weekend, we were pretty much over the Arnold. We had all of our stuff. We got all of our interviews that we thought we were going to get. Um, it was later in the day, Sunday, and we f thankfully got, got a tip that, uh, half Thor was going to be making his way to the SPD booth. I don't know for how long he was there, but we just got a heads up on it. So we, we're literally we ate and we're packed up our shit out of the press room and we were going to walk back to the airbnb and had we not drug our feet and taken our time we would have been blocks away by the time we got this call so um we got the heads up that thor was going to be there so we fucking packed everything up and just you know lowered our shoulder and piled our way through the crowd to try to get up to the get up to the spd booth and we got to interview Half Thor Bjornsson again. So this year, however, we were almost prepared with some questions to ask him, kind of, in that we had actually thought about the possibility of interviewing him. Last year, I think, the you know, he just, like, materialized in front of me when I had the microphone. So I was like, oh, shit. And I asked him if he'd uh, answer a few questions. So he did. And my first, and then I realized once I got things set up that I didn't, I was not prepared to actually talk to him. Like I didn't get on the plane going, so so when you're talking to Half Thor, what are you going to ask him? So I just kind of froze. So this last year, as soon as I, uh, I think the first question I asked him was, how, how, how are you feeling? Like a fucking asshole. And uh, anyway, this year we were a little bit more prepared. Um, it's also coming off of a, coming off of a big win for him. So I think he was uh, pretty, pr pretty receptive. The interesting thing with this is it gets, anytime he's around obviously a crowd starts to pile up but then you get 
camera crews and microphones out and shit. And it's just like, I think everybody gets nervous. <laughs> like we were there, we tried not to take too much of his time. And there's obviously a lot of people waiting in line who wanted to talk to him, wanted to get pictures and we're kind of jamming up his time at the SPD booth. So we made it quick. I think we got it in in under five minutes, but, um, yeah, but by, 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 by the time we were done, there was hundreds of people, um, waiting around and they were pretty much, it was definitely time for us to get the fuck out of the Arnold. So, um, I believe this is our last interview of the Arnold. Um, yeah. So half Thor Bjornsson at the SBD booth. And again, I cannot thank the guys from SBD enough for this. They were, uh, really, really exceptional. So, um, SBD, we support them. Uh, they, they help us out. We help them out. So, um, buy some shit from SBD. They're good people. So here's half Thor Bjornsson at the SBD booth. All right, one last double check. Don't want to fuck this up. I'm recording. So, all right, we're here at the SBD booth at the Arnold this year with Hafthor Bjornsson. We met last year. You probably don't remember, but <laughs> big win last night. Congratulations. How's it feel to finally get it done here? Feels great. You know, all the feels great knowing that all the hard work, you know, uh, dedication, you know, finally paid off. You know, it's been a long journey, but. Um, Coming here in Columbus, Ohio, and finally taking the first place, you know, it's, uh, it means a lot to me. You've had a absolutely huge training year this year. We've been following, a lot of people follow you, but you've been putting up some huge numbers in training. We've also been seeing some things that almost resemble powerlifting training out of you a lot lately. Um, does that represent a change in the way you've been training? Uh, throughout the years, I've been training similar, but, you know, I always try to change, I always try to improve, become better. Uh, a few years back, people said uh, Thor can never win the Arnolds. It's too heavy for him. Uh, it doesn't suit him. He's not strong enough, you know, statically. Can't get it big enough numbers. He can't press enough, and so on and so on. But I guess I proved them wrong here. I've been working very hard on my deadlift and my overhead presses uh, the last eight years, and uh, it finally is paying off big now. You showed him a thing or two this weekend, that's for sure. Can you describe that feeling when you hit that world record 1,041 deadlift? I mean, you, you, you do a great job of showing emotion out there. What are you thinking when that goes down? You know, at the moment, you're not really, you know, thinking about anything except, you know, you just, you're going there and you believe you can lift the weight. You know, for me, it's like, all the years, all the dedication, all the all, everything, you know, is paying off, and you know, it's um, it's more about you know, I if I wouldn't believe I couldn't lift it, then I would never lift it, you know. Before I go to the bar, I know I already I've been lifting it in my head before, you know, so I so I knew I was gonna lift the weight. It's um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Now on a lighter note, half floor. We really want to know what everybody wants to know. How in the fuck do you fit on an airplane to get here? <laughs> it's difficult, man. I, I, it's very difficult. Like, I mean, you're a big guy, guy yourself, but <laughs> but I have to I have to fly business class. Otherwise, I wouldn't fit. Yeah. To be honest with you. Yeah. I believe it. I keep telling them that, but they won't give me the seats. <laughs> so. Do you have your sight? You ju just did this first win here. Next, world strongest man, 2018. I assume that's what you got got your sight set on next. Yeah, I have two big competition coming up. I have Europe strongest man first week in April, uh, and then I have world strongest man in end of April. You know, so I'm I'm just going back home now, training hard, focusing. You know on uh, those two competitions. You know, I've, I've I always have the goal to win them as well. I know you you always got your crew of boys with you from Iceland. Do you guys get to celebrate at least tonight or what? Uh, our celebration, and we go out and we might, you know, just eat some nice food. Then we go home uh, and sleep. <laughs> That's celebration enough then. All right. Well, we got a lot of people lined up here to see you today. We don't want to jam up your day or their day anymore. Thanks a lot for your time. Congratulations and wish you best of luck this There you have it. That was the fucking Arnold. <laughs> so 
Uh, thanks a lot for listening, guys. Um, I'm Tyler. You can follow me on Instagram at Tyler F. And Stone. Tommy can be found on Instagram at Tomahawk underscore D. Tanner runs the official Massonomics Instagram page. That's at Massonomics. Um, all of these videos will be done really soon, I think, and will be up on our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com forward slash Massonomics. Um, you'll get an idea of how much bigger Thor is than all of us. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so... This was uh, another awesome trip. We're really, uh, you know, we're really fortunate to be able to get to uh, get to meet and talk to all these people. So, hope you guys really like it. We had a hell of a fun, hell of a fun time making it. So, um, yeah, go to massonomics.com. Also, while you're there, go to the store and buy some shirts and shit. Um, we have all sorts of stuff now: the lift shirt, the huge life shirt, um, all our OG stuff, hats. Everything's out now. So um massonomics.com there's the store all our articles are there as well you can also sign up for our newsletter there we pimp out a bunch of uh you know coupons and they're the first people to get deals so um yeah well thanks a lot for listening we will uh talk to you next week with our 104th which is technically the two-year episode so thanks a lot for listening and we'll talk to you next week Stay strong. you just heard the massonomics podcast with your ears you're welcome Check us out on Facebook, find us on Instagram at Massinomics and make sure you visit Massinomics.com and buy some of that sweet Massinomics gear. From your friends at Massinomics Studio, home of the world's strongest podcast, stay strong.